welcome to Granny's Country Cooking, and I am so glad you're here today. And I want to welcome my followers, subscribers, my friends, and all of the new people that are starting to watch my videos. And I'm so thankful for every one of you. And today, we are going to make a special chocolate meringue pie. And this is going to be for a wonderful lady named Gayla. And I hope that what I can do today will help you a little bit, and I hope that it will help all of you out there. We're going to be making a pie shell, then the filling for the pie, and then the meringue. So we're going to have a good, good, good time. Now this takes a little while to put it together. So when you're going to do all of this, be sure you have a few hours. And the Pioneer women used to put the, uh, do the pie in the morning with all the steps, the pie shell and the filling and the meringue, and then set it aside and in the refrigerator for about four to six hours and then have it ready for supper. So if you're doing this in the evening, you can put it in the refrigerator overnight and it'll be perfect the next day. You don't want to cut in it too soon because it won't be set up and firm and it'll run everywhere. So we're going to make our beautiful, delicious chocolate meringue pie. And let's get started. I'm going to get everything set up and get my apron on, my hair pulled back, and we'll get started. And as you can tell, you may have seen in my videos before, we always have the coffee pot on and always have a little jar of cookies. So anytime that, that anyone comes by and drops in from the country and friends and people, there's always some welcoming there for them. So I just want you to know you're welcome in my kitchen and welcome to cook with me today. And I love all of you and I'll be with you in just a few minutes. We'll get everything set up. Thank you. Be right back. We're going to be making our pie dough and pie shell, bake it in the oven. But the first thing I want to say is for all the new cooks that are watching, to be sure and have your hands washed, uh, have your hair pulled back so that it doesn't get in your way. If you have an apron, put your apron on. And if you don't have an apron, put a towel around you because it helps you to enjoy cooking. You don't get your clothes messy, as well as you don't get your little fuzzies from your fur babies to get into the food. Also, I always have a little bucket of soapy water with a little bit of bleach. That also helps me to put my dishes in there and it's almost washed by the time I get ready to wash them. All right, now we are going to make our pie dough. Now we're going to use two cups of flour and we're going to use a sifter. I am always try to be careful because you never know what may be in the flour. So we are going to get our sifter out and we're going to use two cups of flour. Okay, there's one. And here is two. Okay, now we are going to use one teaspoon of salt, and I'm going to wipe on my apron. And it's already getting a little messy, but it doesn't matter. We are going to use one teaspoon of salt. And I have my little salt container. I love my little vintage old little salt container. And I do use sea salt. It does make a difference, and it has a better flavor to it. And so we're going to use sea salt one teaspoon. Okay, there's one. Alrighty. I'm going to get this put up. Get this out of the way. Then we're going to sift it all together. As I was growing up, my mother had a little bakery in our home. And when I was three years old, I had the chance to start helping her maybe stir some things or something. 
and I grew up cooking and absolutely loved it. It was just wonderful. Okay, we've got our flour in there. Now we're going to blend in our Crisco. I like to use uh, butter Crisco because the flavor is so good and it's so flaky and so nice. So we are going to use one cup of butter Crisco. This recipe will make two small pie pans of pie dough or it will make one larger pie, pie dough. So we're going to make a little bit bigger size. I'll show you the pie pan in just a minute. This is half a cup, so I'm going to get two of these. As you can see, I have my pastry cloth and my rolling pin ready. This is half, so we're going to slide it in and scoop it around. Now we're going to do one more. I'm going to slide that off there. You can use a cup size. I just happen to have this handy. So we're going to do this. Texas has been so hot. I know everywhere else has been hot this year, but whoa, it has really, really been hot. You may see me wiping the sweat a little bit. Now, the one thing you want to make sure is you have your oven preheated to 400. And it's our oven right now is heating up to 400. All righty. Now we're going to slide it in. Turn it in a big circle. Get all of this out. Now this is the only thing I don't like to drop into the soapy water because the Crisco kind of turns into glue. <laughs> all right. Now we will get this off here. Now what we want to do is to blend the Crisco and the flour together until it's kind of uh, in little lumps. So this is what we're doing. So we're going to start. Now, if you don't have a pastry cutter, you can use a fork. That's plenty. That's fine. And this one is like a little vintage antique pastry cutter that I absolutely love using. After we get our pie shell cooked, then we are going to let it cool down and we will make our other parts to this recipe. We'll make our pie filling to go in to the pie shell. That's going to be fun. Now, as you can tell, I'll move the water a little bit. What I'm doing is I'm stirring and turning in a circle so I can get all of it mixed together. Get it all blended together where it's not just lumps of Crisco in there. All right, we're getting this all mixed up. And it's looking really, really good. Okay. Make sure we get all the Crisco off of this and blend it in there. Okay, there's a little bit of Crisco left in there. So I'm going to blend a little bit more, and you can kind of tell if it's not blended together just right.
I'll show you what it looks like. And we're going to add our liquid here in just a minute. And it looks like little mixed up lumps like this. Like little lumps like that. Now, if you wanted to use a store-bought pastry, it's just fine. But if you have some time and you would like to, to try this, it has such a better flavor. Now, we're going to make, add the liquid to this. And this will be half a cup of liquid. But a little pioneer secret is when the pioneer ladies found out that you could add a little bit of apple cider vinegar to the liquid and add it to the pie shell. And what it does, it makes the pie dough flakier and it makes it even uh, taste better and it has more of a, a texture that you can work with a lot better. So that's what we're going to be doing. We'll put one teaspoon. This is one teaspoon. We're going to put this into this little cup. Okay, and we'll put this up. We're going to use water, and we're going to make half a cup of water. I have to put my finger on it because the lid falls. Now we're going to do half of a cup. Okay, now we're going to stir that together. And we are going to just dump it into the flour mixture. Okay, now we're going to stir and mix this all up into a ball. And we may need to add a little bit more flour, but we'll see when we get there. Um, that there's something unusual about flour and the weather and humidity. And if you're making homemade breads, uh, it's really strange because they, uh, the recipes may tell you between five and six cups of flour, but it, what they're, they're saying is that it, you're not sure, but by the temperature of the weather, the humidity, you may need a little bit more or a little bit less. So that's why they're saying that. And we may be needing a little bit more. Now you can see this is, is stirring together good. We're going to add just a teeny bit more flour to make it into a ball. We're stirring this all up, making a nice big ball. Now this will make two small pie shells or one larger pie shell. And you'll have some excess left over, but that's okay. You'll have plenty. So we are stirring this up really nice. And we want to make sure all of that watery and Crisco is all stirred together. And it's turning into a, a nice ball. We're still going to add a little bit more flour. Kind of work it into it. We'll get this out. One thing about pie dough or biscuit dough is that you don't have to knead it a lot. Uh, it's kind of a tender, kind of a tender pastry, and you don't have to have a lot of flour or a lot of, of, of kneading it too much. All right, this really looks nice. Looky there. Now we're going to take a little bit of flour with your fingers, it's okay. And just kind of sprinkle a little bit in there. We're going to work our hands into it. What I'm doing is taking my hand and pulling and pushing. My fingers are like this, and I'm pulling and pushing, and then moving the bowl in a circle. Like that. See? I'm going like this, like this. 
need a little bit more flour. If you'll hear me sniffing every once in a while, it's allergies also. <laughs> and I may have to get my hanky out to, to wipe some of the, the liquid on my face. Just a teensy bit. What we're doing is we're getting it kind of into a little rubbery feel so that it'll roll out good. All right, now let's look and see. Ooh, that's a pretty ball of dough. Now, you want to make sure you have plenty of flour on the pastry cloth because you the when you're this is kind of sticky a little bit and when you're rolling it out you don't want it to stick on the pastry cloth it can't get it up so you want plenty of flour as you can see I've got quite a bit so we're just going to kind of work it around a little bit Kind of get some of that stickiness, kind of roll it over in the front. Make sure we have plenty of flour. Now we're going to roll it out and we're going to get our rolling pin with flour and then start in the middle and push out, middle, push out and go in a circle. All right, here we go. In the middle, roll out, middle, roll out. Oh, it looks beautiful. Get some more on the, the pastry thing, the rolling pin. Oh, that's really looking nice. Get some more on the pastry rolling pin there. Okay, now, if you were making two small pies when I first had that ball, you would cut it in half with a knife and then roll it with your hands and get it in a circle and then roll it out for a smaller pie. But we're wanting to make enough with plenty dough. So this is our nine inch pie pan. It's kind of an average pie pan. So we're going to put it here and it looks like we've got plenty. All right. Now this is kind of the tricky part and you want to be able to pick it up without it tearing. Whoa, yay, it worked. And you get it half and then you can do it this way and then put it in. Now the point is in the middle, point is in the middle, and then we're going to roll this over, then we're going to roll this back, okay. Now we'll work with it in the pan. Now remember your oven is at 400, getting ready for the pie shell. So we're going to kind of work with our hands and kind of smooth it up the sides right in here. Okay, we're going to kind of move the sides up a little bit. Kind of, kind of do that right there. Get all the little crinkles. Now this is the same pie dough that I use in making fried pies, uh, in making any kind of pie, two crust pies. This is the same recipe. Now you want to cut a lot of this excess off because you don't want a real big thick 
uh, edge around it. And what you can do, if you have time, is get a little cookie sheet and put these little pieces on the cookie sheet and sprinkle it with cinnamon sugar. Ooh, that is very, very good. Now, what I'm doing is I'm trimming it off about a half an inch from this edge right there. And the reason is we're going to roll it into a, like a little edge. And it'd be a real pretty little edge. Okay, see that's quite a bit of dough right there. That'd make a good little snack. Like I said, this is a recipe for two really small pies or one really large pie. And this is kind of a medium pie, so we have a little bit extra. Okay, when it tears like that, it's soft enough that you can take your fingers and kind of mash it back together, and it's okay. I'm going to turn the pie pan. Now we're going to trim off some more. Turn it like this, and we're trimming it off. Now, if I was making a deep dish pie, this pie shell would have been just exactly the right size. But it's a little bit big for this pan, and, and uh, just would be right for an extra big pie. Make sure we have all of this trimmed off because if you've seen like in restaurants or things where the pie dough is a real big thick lump at the edge, it, it doesn't always taste good and it's kind of hard and tough. So you don't want that much too big. Now, if you have any little cracks and any little things, you can take your hands and just kind of smush it in there. Now we're going to make our edging, and we're going to use these two fingers and these thumbs, and we're going to pick the edge up with our thumbs, use these fingers to roll it under, it's rolled under, and then you mash like that. Then you turn your pot pin, then you roll under and mash. Roll under and mash. Roll under and mash. Under and mash. Okay. Now what I'm doing is I'm rolling under and then taking this thumb and kind of twisting, poking it out like that. There you go. Now we're going to go fold it under, then roll like that. Use your thumb and push up like that. And the pie dough is so nice and workable. If it doesn't look just right or anything, you can go back and pinch them up some more to make them pretty. Okay. See, I'm going like, like that, little twist. Okay, rolling like this. Okay. There's a little tear. So what I'm going to do is kind of mash it back together. It doesn't hurt. Going to kind of mash that back together. There's a little tear again, so we're going to mash it. Okay, now we've got this right here, and if you see any that doesn't look quite right, then you could go back and 
kind of work with it because it's flexible. Uh, the vinegar makes it workable. And so that makes it really nice and it's delicious flavor. Now the next thing we're going to do for a pie shell, you don't with a regular pie, but a pie shell, we're going to take a fork and prick holes into it. I have a, a little pastry fork. You can use a regular fork. Any fork will work. And we're going to prick holes all around the bottom as well as all around the sides. Okay. Now, when this cooks, it will be uh, pretty well closed up together. The pudding won't leak out. But what this does is it keeps the pastry from making little raised uh, bubbles and things, little air bubbles. Now I'm going to go around the sides. And then we put it in the oven at 400. And we're going to check it after about maybe 15 minutes. May, it might need a little bit more than that, depending on your oven. You want it kind of a little golden brown. Okay. Now, look at our little, little pie shell fixing to go in the oven. And it's 400 at about 15 to 20 minutes. So, I will let you go. I'll put it on the middle rack so it doesn't get too burnt. And for about 15 to 20 minutes, on 400. So, we will take a break while this is cooking. Okay, our pie shell is out of the oven. And this time it took 25 minutes at 400. So, it may depend on your oven between 20, 15, 20, 25 minutes. But what you want is a nice golden color. And this is absolutely beautiful. I hope I don't drop it. Just beautiful. Now we're going to let this sit off to the side until we make our filling. Now if you are finishing the video at this moment, then thank you for being with me for making our pie shell today. And let me know how you like making it or if there's any ideas you have or questions you have. Comment below and ask me anything you want. Uh, also, you can write to me at grannyscountrycooking at gmail.com. Be sure and push the little bell so you can subscribe to my shows. And you'll know when you have new ones coming along. And also push the like button. I thank you so much for being with us today. And for those that you are continuing on to make the chocolate pie filling and the meringue, I'll see you in just a few minutes. I'll be getting this all set up for our filling. Thank you and see you in just a minute. Okay. Okay, we are back with the chocolate pudding filling. Now for those of you that are just coming into our video with the chocolate filling, this is also can be pudding. And you can take this recipe and pour them into individual little bowls and have some delicious pudding. But today, we're making it into a filling for the pie. And we just made our pie shells, so now we're making our chocolate filling or chocolate pudding. So the first thing we're going to have in here, we're going to have milk. We're going to have sugar, cocoa or the squares of chocolate, uh, corn starch, and salt, vanilla, and some butter. So that's what we're going to have in the recipe. The first thing I want to explain is, uh, in the past, I've made many, many goofs through the years, thinking I could shortcut recipes or substitute this for that or this for that. And I want to tell you that in puddings, do not use low-fat milk or lactose-free milk or uh, low-fat of any kind. It needs to be regular whole milk. And what I've done in the past, I don't, we live way out in the country and I don't always have the chance to go in to town to replenish my milk. So, 
what I like to do is what the pioneer people used to do. And what they did back in the 1800s, they had canned milk at that time. And what they would do is that they would take canned milk and they would have the one can and put one can of water with that canned milk and it would make the milk for your, for your foods or gravies or whatever. So you don't have to rush into town to buy whole milk. You can keep this on hand, a few cans in your pantry, and you're always ready to go with gravies or with anything you're going to make or even like puddings and things, you can have your milk on hand. So what I did for us today, which we're going to have, is that I had one can of milk and one can of water and I mixed it up in my little pitcher. If I have any left over, I'll use it on gravy. So we're going to put that down. Now, the first thing we're going to do is put the sugar, cocoa, and cornstarch and salt together. So, in this recipe, there is one cup of sugar. So, we are going to get us one cup, and it's just regular sugar. doesn't have to be anything special. And I'm going to dip it in. There's some little lumps, but they will get mash down in just a minute. Use clean fingers only and we're going to put one cup of sugar. Okay, now I went ahead and measured the cocoa. I like to use Hershey's cocoa. You can use whatever flavor. Now if you want it a little bit darker, more chocolatey than what we're making, you can add more cocoa to it. And as you make this recipe several times, you'll know whether you like a little bit more or a little bit less of the cocoa. Now, I do use the squares of chocolates at times. This one-third of cocoa equals two ounces of squares of chocolate that you would melt in this, this uh, grouping right here. So now we have one-third cup of cocoa. We're going to put that in. I love my little drawer with all my little handy tools in it. And we're going to use this little spatula again in just a minute. Now, we're going to be using our whisk. This is a fantastic whisk. If you can find one with a pointed end, it helps to get in all the corners of the pan when you're making pudding or filling. Okay. Now, let's see what do we need. We have sugar, we have the cocoa, and now we need some cornstarch, and we're going to use three tablespoons. So let's get our tablespoons out, and I use cornstarch a lot, and I have it in this little jar. I love my little jars, and I keep a one tablespoon in there all the time, and this brand I'm trying to remember, uh, is just a regular brand. I just have the name cornstarch in there. So we are going to put three tablespoons into our pan. Then we're going to stir it up in just a minute. There's one. There is two. And there is three. That cornstarch doesn't flavor, but it thickens, and you have to have it boiling when you're going to use it, when you're thickening it up. Okay, that was three. Excuse my fingers. That's why we have aprons. I love aprons. Now we're going to put salt in, and we need one half teaspoon. This is one half, and I like sea salt because it gives a better flavor. And you don't always have to use the same amount. Uh, you can use a little bit less with sea salt and you still have good flavor. Now, we're going to mix up our dry ingredients, kind of, and I'll let you see in our good saucepan. Just going to kind of stir it. There's a few little sugar lumps, but we'll get it all mixed up, especially when we add the milk. 
and we have that right there. And those little lumps will go away in just a minute. Now, we need equal of two cups. You can use whole milk from the grocery store, which is just fine. Or if you want to use the, the evaporated milk, it has a richer flavor. And wow, it is really good. That's what I'm using today. So I have my little pitcher and my measuring cup. We're going to measure two cups. Okay. We have a little bit left for gravy. Okay, we're going to stir it in. Whoops, it spilled. I'll get that little bit off the floor in a minute. Now, this can go in our soapy water, and it'll be clean in just a little bit. And I'll get the counter. Now, we're going to boil this for one full minute. What that means is you get it stirred constantly. Don't let it scorch on a medium flame not too high, not too low. And you're going to boil, it comes to a boil, then you set your timer for one minute to boil it one full minute and then take it off the burner. So that's what we're going to do. So I will be back with you after this is boiled. I'll let you see what it looks like. Then we're going to add egg yolks and vanilla and butter. Okay, be right back. Okay, that was quick. We boiled this pudding mixture, and as you can see, it's nice, rich, thick chocolate. We're going to add some egg yolks, and there will be three egg yolks. And I have to tell you something comical about myself. A while ago, I'm glad I did it beforehand because you didn't need to sit there watching me break eggs and divide the whites between the yolk. And I, one of them just broke all in my hand, fell all over my apron, all over the floor. <laughs> that would have been funny on the air. But I went ahead and did it before we had that mess. So now I have three egg yolks. What we're going to do is I have a little bitty whisk and it's a nice long handle. I got this at Amazon. Magnificent. I'm going to mix up the three egg yolks. They're divided. Now the egg whites we have sitting off to the side because when we make a meringue in just a few minutes, we want to have the warmed down egg whites. They beat up a lot better. So we are going to make the egg whites in just a little bit. Now this is mixed up three egg yolks. Now what we're going to do is add some of this, and the pan's pretty hot. Let me get a pot holder. I'm going to pour into the egg yolks, if you can see, part of the mixture don't have to pour it all. The reason why we're doing this is we're going to boil this again for one more minute and it gives it a richer flavor. Now we're going to mix up the chocolate and the egg yolks. Don't get too rambunctious because it'll go out of your little bowl. We're going to mix this up. Now if I had poured the egg yolk straight into the pudding it would have curdled and cooked the egg yolks, and you would have had yellow lumps. We don't want yellow lumps. So when you're pouring the chocolate, the filling, into the egg yolks, it's cooling it down so it won't cook it. And now we have it all stirred. We are going to put this down. We can wash the counter in a minute. We're going to use our little spatula Pour it all in and scrape it. Now try to remember, no low-fat milk. 
It can be whole milk from the store or you can use the canned milk. And I found out the hard way that the low fat milk will not firm up. It stays runny like a syrup pretty much. And as many years as I've cooked, I have made mistakes where I've accidentally used a low fat because I use a low fat for different things. But in pudding, no, don't use low fat. Now I'm stirring this all up, getting it all mixed. Then I'm going to boil it one more minute. Get it hot to boil, then boil one solid minute, turn the burner off, and bring it back. Then we will add some vanilla and some butter. So, I will be right back. Thank you. Well, that was quick. I used my little timer, got it back on the stove, got it heated back up, boiled it for one full minute. Use your timer, and then, then turn the burner right off. Now, we're going to add two tablespoons of butter. And if you can, it needs to be the real butter. It has a better flavor. And I already measured two tablespoons. So we're going to drop that in there. And then we'll stir this up. After it's mixed, we'll put in vanilla and stir that. Then we'll pour it into our pie shell. It's going to be so good. I wish you could lick the pan with me in just a minute. <laughs> it's going to be delicious. If you like chocolate, wow. And soon I will have the uh, cream pies or coconut cream pies, and I'll show you how to do that. And it's basically the same recipe without the cocoa, but it's a little bit different. And so we will have the cream pies, the coconut cream pies, and different things like that. So we will have this done pretty quick and then we'll pour it into the pie shell. Now that butter is melted, went quick. Now we're going to use one teaspoon. And this is one teaspoon. Kind of be careful, these bottles are heavy. Okay. Now we'll stir this all up. Oh, and that that pure vanilla is the only thing to use in all of your cooking if you can find it. This is called La Vincidora while I'm stirring and it does come from Mexico. It's a humongous bottle and it lasts me forever and I cook all the time. And uh, you can buy it off of Amazon or you can get it through maybe some gift shops sort of thing. In some places you can get better prices than others. But I love this. When you use pure vanilla, it doesn't cook out of your food. Like if you're making cookies or cakes or pies or anything, Whenever you're adding it to the, the, the puddings or cakes, whatever, uh, it doesn't, flavor doesn't cook out. You can taste that flavor. It's delicious. Absolutely. Now, this is out of this world. And it's ready to go in the pie. Now, this will be something to lick after a while. And we're going to use our little spatula. And that pan's still kind of hot, so I'm going to scoot this shell, the pie shell over where you can see it. And we're going to pour that chocolate filling in. Look at that. And it's steaming. It is so hot and rich and good. When you're cooking this filling, don't have the burner up too high to make it hurry up because then it scorches on the bottom and you can taste that scorch flavor. So don't cook it too high of a burner. Just have it like on a medium or a little less than medium. All right. Wow, that looks 
looks delicious. Let me see if I can get a little bit more out. All right, and I'm going to get to lick the pan in a little bit. Okay, now kind of spread it around a little bit. Make sure it's kind of evenly in there. Now we're going to let the pie filling and shell sit for just a few minutes while we're getting ready for the, the meringue. Now the meringue will go on top of the warm, hottish pie filling and then into the oven. So we're going to set this off to the side while we get ready to make our meringue. And if you're uh, leaving the video and not watching the rest of the video for the meringue, uh, thank you so much for watching the pie filling. And you can use this as just pudding in little cups. And thank you so much for being with us. And be sure and touch the like button and also subscribe with the little bell. And thank you for being with us. Now, for those of you that are staying on, we're going to make the, uh, the meringue top in just a few minutes. I'm going to get things set up for us. So I'll be right back. Thank you. All right, we are back with the meringue. And for those of you that are just coming with us for the meringue video, we are using six, six egg whites. And the reason for that is to make a big, rounded, fluffy meringue. You've seen in some of the restaurants and cafes where they have their their pie and they serve the meringue pie or the chocolate pie or whatever and the, the meringue is about this tall. That's what we're making today. And I have seen some that meringue is about that high and it still tastes good but it sure is pretty to have that big fluffy meringue. So that's what we're doing. Now we're going to use six egg whites, okay? Now we're going to put them into a nice big, very clean bowl. Don't use the bowl that you may have used, made the pie uh, dough and pie shell and things like that in. Use a nice clean, crispy clean bowl and there won't be any excess oil to stop. Now there's going to be, in this recipe, we're going to have cream of tartar. That has a little bit of a flavor and it gives it a little bit of a stiffening to help. There's going to be one cup of sugar slowly added. There's going to be one teaspoon of this delicious pure vanilla. Pure vanilla. Don't use the imitation. And then we're going to put it in a 400 preheated oven. Now make sure that the oven is preheated before you put the pie in because if it's not a quick heat cook, it'll just kind of start melting down. The egg watch will kind of go away. But if you start cooking it with the high temperature and ready, then it'll firm up real good. So we have got six egg whites and I'm going to have to beat them so it's going to be noisy in just a minute. But we're going to beat for a long time to get stiff, uh, stiff, big, white, fluffy little spikes sticking up. Then we'll start adding the cream of tartar. Now the cream of tartar is one half of a teaspoon. So I'll kind of go ahead and get that ready before we start because it'll be kind of a slow adding while we're beating. So we will get that. That is going to be ready. I'll set it right there. And then I'll get our sugar measured out. We're going to be gently, gradually adding the sugar. Oh, this is so fun making this beautiful, fluffy meringue. It's wonderful. Have clean fingers, of course, and measure out one cup and it will be ready when you are ready to start adding it. First we'll add the cream of tartar as I'm blending and stiffening. Then we'll be adding a little bit of sugar as we go along. Then the very last we'll put in one teaspoon of vanilla to finish it off. Okay, now I'm sorry for the noise. Here we go. We're going to be really loud. <laughs>
some little peaks there standing up. Now I'm going to slowly add the cream of tartar.
beautiful stuff. Oh my gosh. Makes you just want to eat it out of the bowl. It's just beautiful. Wow. Ooh, wish you could lick the batter with me. Now we're going to get the pie. Be right back. Now remember, you need to have this warm, or uh, pretty, pretty warm, or still almost hot, and you have your oven set at 400. Now we're going to pile this on top of this beautiful pie filling. Look at all of this! Oh my gosh! Now this would work for two, two small pies, but we're going to make a big, beautiful meringue. If I don't drop the bowl in the pudding. Oh. My gosh, look at that. Ah! <laughs> That's beautiful. Now, if you want to have a smaller amount of meringue, you can use three and divide everything in half. But I absolutely love the nice, big, tall meringue that you see in all the restaurants. Look at that. It's just beautiful. Now, the main thing you want to do is go all the way close to the edge as much as you can. And you want to get it as much as possible. And then we're going to bake it in the oven at 400 for 8 to 10 minutes, something like that. Wow, this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Not long ago, I, I made a special gift for a person that had really helped my husband and I, and I made a coconut cream pie for him, and it had this big, round, beautiful meringue. There was one little cafe I used to stop at in years ago, and it was in Heiko, Texas. And it was a, a little coffee shop, and they had the fresh brewed coffee every time you walked in the door you could you could see it and every time you got a cup of coffee it was fresh brewed oh and they had this kind of pie wow and you don't see that anymore it is not something that you can find in very many cafes anymore. Is this beautiful meringue. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. I just love that. Now, I'm going to slide this into the middle rack. Don't have it too close to the top because it'll burn the top. Now, if it was going to be a coconut cream pie, what we would do is we would right now sprinkle coconut over the top. We would make a vanilla filling with coconut in the filling. Then we would sprinkle the coconut around the top and it's beautiful. But this is our chocolate filling, chocolate meringue pie. Now I'm going to pop this in the oven for about eight to 10 minutes and I will be right back with you. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look at this beautiful Beautiful pie, if I can raise it up for you to look. Absolutely beautiful. It's all, it's a little bit brown on top, but uh, next time, since I had it so high, I will lower my rack a little bit. But it's absolutely beautiful. Look at this. I'm just so proud of that. And I can't wait to hear from you about your pie. And send me pictures if you'd like to on the email. I'd love to hear from you. Now, this next step is extremely important. Uh, do Let it sit out on the cabinet for one 
hour. One hour. Then put it in the refrigerator, uncovered, please, for four to six hours so it will set up. And the reason why is I've made mistakes myself. I've covered it up and afraid of something whatever. And what happened was the heat from the inside caused the meringue to start melting. It was like a little dome effect. And it started melting and the meringue messed all up. So leave it uncovered for four to six hours. And then it will be perfect to cut. It should be cool enough that it will be firm because it's all kind of hot right now from being in the oven. So this is the beautiful meringue. It can go on any kind of pie. And this is your chocolate meringue pie. So I hope you enjoy it. Let me know when you make it. I'd love to hear from every one of you. Be sure and push the like button and the little bell so that you'll be notified at new videos coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I love every one of you. Thank you for being here. I wish you could help me eat this beautiful pie. Love you. Bye-bye.